What is the best way for Christians to make sense of the relationship between science and the Christian faith? When we think about the science-faith dialogues that take place in the church, we think about biblical scholars and theologians and physicists and biologists being engaged in these conversations. And you're an engineer, Dominic, a PhD engineer. You're a professor at Oral Roberts University. And you have the perspective as an engineer that maybe engineering has something important to contribute to the, the science-faith dialogue. And so I want to explore that a little bit with you. And one thing that I find very interesting is the idea of reverse engineering. Could you explain what reverse engineering is and then how does that relate to biological systems and our understanding of biological systems? Right, reverse engineering, we've probably all done it as, as a kid. If you ever took anything apart and tried to figure out how it worked, that's reverse engineering. So uh, everybody has a little bit of expertise in this area. And it's, in particular, it looks at the important relationships between elements of a complex system. And so this is being done quite a bit in biology. And uh, we began to think at ORU in the research group that I work with, uh, there's some important implications to this kind of work and the recognition that an engineering or reverse engineering approach is the best way to explore and make progress with these systems. We're saying that the fact that natural systems are so readily and profitably reverse engineered by human beings strongly suggests that such systems were engineered in the first place. And the implication here is one of purpose as opposed to an accidental kind of uh, origin for these systems. Now, um, something that's always been intriguing to me is this idea of biomimetics, the, the, the notion that engineers would look at the way in which biological systems function and then would derive inspiration in terms of how to, to develop new designs or how to solve problems that sometimes these engineers are kind of at a, a dead end, you know, at a, at a stalemate in terms of making progress. Mm -hmm. How does biomimetics relate to reverse engineering and again, what kind of theological implications can we draw from that type of res uh, research and engineering? Right, biomimetics is a fascinating area because engineers and scientists are recognizing that nature has some really great solutions <laughs> to problems and some really great technology that if we can steal, if we can borrow it and learn how to do it, uh, we can make some wonderful products. Uh, Velcro, for example, is a, is a biomimetic adaptation of the hooks and, and loops that exist on, uh, uh, on seeds and other uh, things in nature. Uh, there's many, many examples. And I think it's interesting because we're imitating here and, and it's said that imitation is one of the purest forms of flattery. So we, it shows our appreciation for uh, what nature uh, uh, provides uh, and the efficiencies and the optimality that exist in nature and the wonderful solutions. So. Um, that's an implication that I think we need to be aware of and recognize that it is holding up nature in a very high regard in an engineering sense. You know, what's intriguing to me is that I've even had an evolutionary biologist say to me one time that virtually everything in, biolo in biology, that every biological system is an evolutionary kludge job. It's just what evolution has cobbled together. And that's a very bizarre perspective that doesn't seem to fit very well with this idea of biomimetics or reverse engineering? Well, I, I want to think carefully about that and, and not just try to provide a pat answer because there, there are examples that we, are, that we wonder about. You know, the human back, for example, is, is thought to be not that great of a system because of people's experience with bad backs. And, uh, there are other instances in nature where we are curious about why they appear to be negative instances. So we don't have all the answers in that area, but I think we need to recognize that uh, we don't know all of the, the situation. We don't know all of the constraints and all of the uh, ultimate objectives for, for these systems. We are limited in our understanding. but. At the same time, we also need to recognize that from a reverse engineering perspective, you always need to ask the question uh, for the system that you're analyzing, 
Has it undergone any damage or wear and tear in its history, any corruption in its history? And according to the Christian worldview, this is something that human beings have experienced in their history. They have done things that perhaps were against their purpose, uh, the purpose that God had in mind for them. And so that rebellion could potentially have produced some effects that are, are damaging to the human system.